Hi! I have a lot of fun things to share with you guys today. I have like my favorites of the month, what shows I've been watching, and also like talking about sustainability and stuff. I am wearing a thrifted dress today. You might have seen it in my thrift haul for dresses, and I'm just gonna get ready. Also gonna do my hair today. I haven't done one of these in quite a while, so I'm pretty excited. I know a lot of y'all really like the get ready with me's and like just the chatting, and I really like it too. It's just that like I don't get the time because usually when I do this, it takes like two hours. Are these lash extensions not gojals i love them so much a regular joint tina you can follow her on instagram it's tina lash brow beauty i'm gonna leave it down below i'll leave it here on the screen she deserves some screen time i think people subscribe to the channel for a reason they like the regular content uh for some reason like people started getting mean i've never had like really negative comments before but that like really because I used to tell my friends or like I used to tell other creators that ask me like oh how do you deal with the hate then I'm like oh I almost never get hate like you get random like oh your double eyelids look so ugly sort of thing like at that video and I understand because that was when I was recovering I'm going in with the Laura Geller speckle on my cheeks and then with a more mattifying one in the middle i'm gonna do a coral look today by the way i used to be very happy and proud of the fact that i was like oh i don't really get hit and it's quite rare i guess for especially for a singaporean creator and i'm not talking about constructive criticism and i think it's also my fault lah. like i put a lot of pressure on like making better content and every time i put something out especially if i'm really excited or i spend a lot of time on it i talked to my manager about it and he was like you know you're just creating a lot of problems problems for yourself because your videos are fine just keep on doing it but I just got really stressed because I keep feeling like I should produce better stuff and that I should be more inventive. I'm gonna use the Fenty True Matte Pro Filter. I wanted to do my own stuff but I also wanted to do a slurp. I filmed a bunch of stuff that I hadn't edited and then I also wanted to like do some sponsored posts to earn that cash you know mm -hmm. so I was really like starting to fall out of love with it. It was a string of videos that like I think didn't take really well and it was stuff that I was trying to be adventurous and more creative with and I was like <sighs> so I ended up um, focusing more on Go Mago. So Go Mago is a costume jewelry like dead stock jewelry sort of business that I run small scale we do it online I just bring in uh, like vintage dead stock earrings that mm -hmm, stores don't want to sell anymore because basically stores are like moving on to the next season and next season and when you do that for long enough they become vintage and they're still pretty affordable and I just like playing with like accessories especially earrings and stuff so I would buy them for myself and I would bring them in and then that just became a business. It all started in New York where I like physically was there to, to source and to look and I just I have so much fun like doing it so I was also stuck in a rut with that because I had no time I brought in my friend who has been friends with me for 10 years gonna use the IT Cosmetics CC oil free cream and I'm gonna mix it in with a little bit of the ordinary just because it's a little bit more watery and light you can also do this with moisturizer. I love doing this with moisturizer. Yeah, so we've been running it ever since and we did a whole rebranding and it's it's what I want now. Like the colour scheme, the fonts, the sort of style. We did a pop-up, you know, we've got like two new collections already. We expanded into apparel, so vintage clothing as well. And I was like really happy with it and I wanted to focus all of my time and energy on it. But when I do that, I cannot do YouTube. And then I was like feeling guilty because I'm like not uploading from uploading once to twice a week to like maybe one and a half weeks you know that sort of thing so I was feeling like really sad and I miss making videos I love making videos I love just like sitting here and talking to y'all I don't even know if like y'all finally rambly or not just you know I think y'all know what I feel and I'm really excited to get back into it so I made a personal promise to myself that in September I'm gonna take a little bit of a backseat for Go Mago and uh oh and attending events I love most events because they're really really fun and I get to see like my other creator friends which you know what people think that we all fight against each other and we all hate each other but it's not true like I really like seeing some of my friends uh not all of them are fantastic like, but most of the time the people that do it are like really interested in creating content and they're just usually like quite fun to hang out with so I do like going to events especially because I like to meet with the brands and like ask them about their products and really get a better understanding of what they're about and especially when I go with a friend I can bring my 
own like non-influencer friend or if I go with an influencer friend to me it's still work so it's fun like being productive and having fun at the same time but I think from now on I'm gonna be a little bit more selective because I find that when I start going for events and networking it's like as much fun and like as productive as they are you know sometimes you just get a bunch of them and they're all on the same day so you just like go and back and forth and stuff and I find that like even though I'm in the area and it seems convenient for me at the time I don't get time to come back and edit my videos or even film so in the month of September that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take the time the extra time that I have to really be making videos and to be editing really well and I genuinely like editing it just takes a very long time I started like you know watching more tutorials on how to you know edit better and stuff and hopefully I'm able to like produce better stuff for y'all also and my other focus is eating clean eating well oily food is heaty we all know that but meat also does a lot in terms of inflammation of either your organs or your muscles and I've been eating quite a lot of junk food because when you live alone and you're in charge of your own like grocery shopping when I do shop when I'm hungry <laughs> I get a lot of junk so I need to chill I need to like tone it down and I also been like really into this idea of like eating clean and knowing where my food comes from and just be a little bit more mindful mindful is the word I'm not turning vegan I, I love my meat okay but that doesn't mean that I can't eat more vegan food you know vegan food is really quite nice eh? some people really like oh my god there's no meat but you know what they have a lot of other stuff that you don't really get to taste and you can get to see the flavor profile and the thing that I like about it is it feels light there's no lethargy or there's no sort of like oh after eating I feel a lot more like fresh and energized and and a good sort of like satisfied sort of full so that's just me I'm gonna use the Mamond creamy multicolor balm in number seven dark ginger very light and very gentle and I'm just gonna do this from the hairline, like that. I'm gonna contour like my forehead and the rest of the other face with powder later, but that's just where I want the contours to hit the hardest. And another reason why I've been so, I guess, mindful and like interested in food is because I've just been watching a lot of food. I've always, okay lah, I've always loved food. Like what am I talking about? Like, oh my god, I've been watching. No, 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 I love, love, love it. It's, ah, food is like the gateway to everything it, to culture to people food is just such an essential part of being alive and i just find that it's really interesting to see what other people eat um doing my own grocery shopping and cooking on my own has been so liberating because i get to be a little bit more experimental i get to eat specifically the things that i like i do like vegetables i like like fresh stuff and i love cooking and i've been watching several shows sorry about that the first show i've been watching gonna get into my brows as we go through this is uh the final table and i saw a lot of the ads nah i should i should conceal first sorry <laughs> not as flawless <laughs> as i i would like and you know you always see like the final table for a while like, on like netflix front page being like oh 12 countries the best chefs blah 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 and it looks super intense and i used to be like oh like come on and our cooking reality tv it's usually like such a joke but I watched it just for lols because I was like, you know what, I want to watch people cook. I have been obsessed for many months now um, with Bon Appetit. Bon Appetit is another YouTube channel online. Mm -hmm. The dynamic of people, it's really like The Office, like it's so funny. Every one of them have such like distinct personalities and because it's not scripted and these are real people, like you, you really feel like a genuine connection with them. And the food that they cover is very different and from what I can see in the comments, most of them are pretty authentic, especially when they do like Italian cooking or stuff like that and the recipes are really simple the ingredients are easy to get it's not super complicated and so I like trying some of the recipes sometimes and it's just like really fun so anyway back to the final table it turns out that these people are actually sourced and they are actually like actual good cooks there are women in it too which is really exciting because i feel like the culinary field is very much dominated by men they all come from different countries they're all paired up together and every single episode they're sort of like 
traveling to a different country, so Mexico, France, Japan. And the first challenge is to make their national dish um, chosen by their ambassadors. And then the people in the bottom three or four that didn't do well in the first round will have to cook a second one, like based on a specific ingredient that a celebrity chef from that country comes in and chooses. It's very interesting and they splice like little bits of like history and background in. And uh, obviously my favorite, okay, I have a, a bunch of favorites. So I really like Ash, Grandmaster Ash. I, I follow her on Instagram. She's, I think, South African. I think she's just quite cool, you know? And then I also like, oh gosh, I forgot her name. But she's, uh, sorry, there's a hair in my... She's from New Zealand. She cooks food specifically from the Maori tribe, but she makes it like fine dining. She's the first person to do that. Ooh, okay, I cannot talk while I'm doing my brows. Hold on, ah. Uh. You know, looking back like the, at the last year, I realised I drew my eyebrows so freaking long and so freaking heavy on the ends. What was I doing? Thank God someone in the comments was like, yeah, your eyebrow like damn long ah. Then I'm like, oh my God, yeah it is. <laughs> so I've stopped. It's still quite long, but I feel like it matches my face, but it's not like super heavy on the end, so I think it's okay. It looks really unnatural now, like drawing this line, but when you brush it up, it's gonna be fine. This new Fenty eyebrow, wow, I really like it. You need to like zoom out and look at your eyebrow from further away because when you do this, you're like, oh yeah, so nice. And then you can't really see how it balances out your face if it is balancing out your face. So I think it is for now. They're never going to be perfect. I'm going to switch to the little brooch. It's just a tiny little shadow. It does take a little bit of getting used to because you know with spoolie you can sort of comb it in any direction but you just gotta be a little bit careful and just gotta do it like this way. If you're into soap brows, if you're into like a clear brow gel, you can also use this to sh sh sh. It'll be very nice. She, you know what, let's do that. I have a tiny little built brow gel. Okay, okay, okay. Now let's talk about my favorite contestant on the final table. <coughs> Okay, we got a bit excited there. <laughs> His name is Charles Michel and he is a French Colombian chef and the way he sees our uh, base and intellectual. I was just on my second episode when I was talking to my friend Shu and I was like, oh my god, I love it. And she was like, yeah, isn't it so great? Have you seen Charles? Oh my god, my baby Charles. And I was like, who's Charles? And then as I kept watching, I realized, oh my god. Baby Charles, he's so cute. Oh gosh, I don't think I've ever like fangirled over someone before or like been so like. <laughs> he's just such a gentle soul. He's uh, okay. He sees plating as an art, and he's really um all about like aesthetics and food and gastronomy and like food science and all of that. Love the glitteriness. This is the kilowatt. What is this? The kilowatt. Kilowatt Foil. It's a freestyle highlighter palette. You can also use it as a shadow. Love it. It was on sale at Sephora. I know. What a good deal. He's trained and like brought up on like staunchy French cooking. La Institut Belhartoha. And then after that, because his mom is Colombian, he cooks a lot of Colombian dishes also. He's really into like mindful eating, knowing where your food comes from and eating sustainably. And so when I first saw him, the first episode, spoiler alert, was Mexico and they were making tacos. I love tacos. I have this that I don't know where it's from. Oh, it's from Etude House. So I want to use this as my main color. I'm still... Every single video of Get Ready Me, I'm always holding this. Sorry, I love it. This is the best colour. Ooh, this is a great colour too. Yeah, okay. Love it, love it so much. The first episode, they were doing tacos. He and his partner, Rodrigo, who is also, by the way, super cool, he literally goes out to the lake behind his restaurant every single day to fish and, like, gather his own produce. So, hats off, man. They came up with, like, crickets, like, dried crickets, with gold foil on it. I thought it was just like an AA way of getting the camera on them because they're doing something that's like so radical, like what? First episode, you're not really cooking real food. You're sort of like putting crickets and, and gold. Like to me, it's like, okay, like that's just for the shock factor, right? But then as the judges were sort of digging into it, one of the judges mentioned that like, oh, it's so interesting that you put cricket and, and, and gold together because they are such symbols of Mexico. I felt so stupid. I was like, oh... Okay. <laughs> and then, you know, they went on and as it goes on, you really realise the, the amount of like thought 
and like poetry in every single one of their plates. It's just so beautiful and he's such an intellectual. He's published like a ton of academic journals and articles on gastronomy and cuisine and aesthetics and stuff. So he does a lot of like different lines of philosophy lah. And he was also a research assistant in Oxford under one of the food science like professors without having a food science degree. Bibi can also speak five languages, which, you know, that's impressive. <laughs> I, I've been following him on Instagram and just seeing him like being so one with the nature. And he still eats meat, but he just is very careful to know where his meat is coming from and they're farming sustainably and it's a regenerative culture. Yeah. And, you know, paired up with the whole like, you know, my BB knowing more about like plating and knowing more about aesthetics and sustainable lifestyle habits with food. I've also been watching um, Bon Appetit's It's Alive. I've been obsessed with them for like a year like Brett is the the host is a human version of a golden retriever like that's that's just him he's just such a nice guy he's just like a New Jersey like white dad that's like really loud and got like ADHD like super lots of energy and always laughing and he's just like a very natural guy on camera and there's this one series called Going Places where he goes to a bunch of places but the specific one I'm talking about is Hawaii and they did like spear fishing and then oh my god they went boar hunting and then they had like emu rocks and they and they cooked it underground that's just okay to me that's just so so cool cross all of my fingers and my toes i'll be able to do that like sometime in my life it's just so amazing to watch and to see how the community comes together so i feel like watching all of these videos and shows have really impacted the way i see food as well um just being a lot more respectful and grateful for your food not taking it for granted and being a little bit more adventurous with it so oh oh my gosh you know what <laughs> Oh, my sheets are like super messy the whole time. It gives like a relaxed look to the room. By the way, if it's super messy, don't worry. I've given up on trying to make it like really neat. I am going to be doing a huge Marie Kondo style wardrobe clear out. I am aiming to clear out at least 30 to 40% of my clothes and then I'll be able to sell it on either carousel or Instagram. So stay tuned this month. It's happening. What was I saying? Oh, I was lying on my bed. Okay, and I dreamt one night of me being able to film and almost like it's a live episode you know anthony bourdain so okay oh that's another one that i've been loving parts unknown and and something else i i'm it's it like the hey google what shows have anthony bourdain starred in anthony bourdain's tv shows include anthony bourdain parts unknown anthony bourdain no reservations no reservations that's it the one about colombia is really great the one about montreal is really great oh that's so cool and then i've been talking to my friend and like she went to mongolia and she cooked with the locals and uh, that's just that's just crazy okay so I, I i love all of that okay that's what i want to do in my life i dreamt that i was in sort of like an anthony bourdain it's a life sort of like you know going around learning stuff with charles michel oh my god he would you know um, hunt for fish at the river and then he would teach me how to prepare a fish because I don't actually know. We would like cook together and we like explore together and then we were like dancing with the locals and, and having a good time and we went to all these different places and it was just such a good dream. I think it's the best dream I've ever had. And then you know how like in Brooklyn Nine-Nine when um, Boyle, <laughs> he, he dreams of like Jake coming back from prison and like they hug together and they're going to Disneyland. I just go for the shows. <laughs> Boyle! Boyle! And then uh, Terry wakes him up and he's like, Why, Why did you, you wake me up? up? I told you, you never to wake, wake me up! And I, I felt that. He's just so charismatic and he genuinely cares and he goes around um, teaching people, mentoring people, having exhibitions at art galleries, learning about the art of plating and... Uh, I just want him to come here. Chef's Table, I haven't finished watching because it's just so precious to me. Like I'm not able to enjoy it as someone just watching it. I'm always like writing, taking down notes. If I don't, I feel very uncomfortable. So that's what I do with like Anthony Bourdain as well. I write down um, filming tips or like what he's covered or how he does it so that I can also learn from it and make better food videos and stuff. And I feel like with Chef's Table, it's just the epitome of what I want to do. Whenever I watch it, I get very like depressed and like thinking how I want to do it myself and like how I can translate this in terms of like a Singaporean context or even when I go overseas. So I I, I take my time watching Chef's Table. Street food was okay. It was, it was mm, you can tell that like 
it's not as well done as Chef's Table. Okay, I'm just using my finger as a blender right now. That's pretty nice, huh? That's not so bad. So because of that, I, I start to watch a little bit more like easier stuff. And I think because I've been watching so much Bon Appetit and because I've been watching like a bunch of other like YouTube videos as well, that's how I like fell back in love with making videos. After re-watching all the Bon Appetit, like it's a live episodes, I realized I missed out on the one with Samin, who is the host and the author of Salt Heat. No, Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat. Hmm. And she just seems like such a nice person, so I really want to watch it. Also, it's getting a bit dark because I think it's going to rain. Let me turn on these lights. Just a little bit. Ah, okay. I basically bought um, DIY vanity lights and I put them around my dressing table. It's just like a wire and they have double-sided tape, like mounting tape on the back. And so I just like measured everything out and put it on and it looks great. I love it so much. Because for me, like my lights are very dim and they're on the top. Or when it's really cloudy, like you just can't see yourself. So never can see myself. Really into podcasts full stop. Like I love JBU, like Just Between Us. I've been watching them for years and years and years. And I'm trying to to be able to learn on the go instead of just listening to music. Music is fun and it's great, but I just want to learn stuff and I just want to hear discussions. Also because I'm, you know, working on my own, I, I don't really get to have these discussions as often as I want. Yeah. I also listen to um, Bad With Money, which is by one of the hosts, Gabby Dunn. It's about financial literacy, but a lot of it now in this season that I'm on, which is season three, is very much on like American finance. At the start, season one, I was really into it because it was like about artists and like freelancers and stuff. But I think they're trying to make it a little bit more general and universal for the American. So I... I cannot relate as much to it. Now, I listen to a lot of um, true crime podcasts, so I listen to Crime Junkie. I'm almost done with all of the episodes. And also, I've also been into Chinese YouTubers. They are so much fun. Also, because I don't get the opportunity to speak Chinese as much, you know what? I might just not even put any eyeliner on because my lashes are so beautiful and I don't want to have a problem removing them and then dropping. Tina! I love them! Okay, I'm going to add something in the inner corner. Ooh, purple! Okay, how do we feel? How do we feel about that? Mm -hmm. No, just very little. You can't even see. Oh, maybe I should have gone with this. Tip it. Ooh, okay. You, oh, now you see it. Okay, <laughs> let me just blend it out because it's very intense. Okay, back to Chinese YouTubers. I want to make sure that I can still speak Mandarin. Like, to be quite honest, that's why I started it. I think it's so important to be bilingual or trilingual or to just know more than one language. Language and food are like the ultimate ways to connect to people. And I just feel like that's, that's what I want to do. I feel bad when I can't speak Chinese the same way that they can, when I can't really show like 100% of my personality in Chinese. I've just been chilling out because I think I worked like extra hard in July and that like kind of tore me apart. In this little break, I have been, let me just dab a little bit more coral. <laughs> So besides Chinese YouTubers, I've been watching Money Heist and uh, Cable Girls. All three seasons of Money Heist, all four seasons of Cable Girls. Love them. Cable Girls season four was a bit of a miss. Honestly, it's, it's kind of meh. I don't know what was going on. It's like very shoddy writing. The previous three seasons were great. Money Heist is fantastic. Love it. So great. Also been watching Mindhunter. Okay, this... Let's stop here for a second. Let's let's talk about them. So, uh, Money Heist and Cable Girls, they're both in Spanish. It was really fun and really easy for me to pick up. So, I've also been learning Spanish on the side. But, I was like, how can I master another language when I haven't mastered my own mother tongue? So, I was like, let's look for like beauty YouTubers. Also, because I want to like prepare myself to make like a Chinese. Because, oh God, Kathleen Lights did one in Spanish. is so funny. And I think when you speak in another language... It's it's, it shows like a different side of your personality. I want to make a get ready with me in Chinese. To prep for that, I realized I don't know what eyeshadow is. I don't know what cheeks is. I got confused like Mei Mao and Yan Mei. Like, I was like, which one is eyebrow? Which one is eyelashes? Like, bleh. I started watching Chinese YouTubers and just went down the rabbit hole. I started like just typing in Chinese and I would just like follow everyone and watch everyone. I really like Da Lao Tier. Their humour is just so dry and it's just so like brash. It's so funny. There's another lady that's sort of less known. She's only got like 1.8k subscribers. I don't know why. She's very, very funny. Uh, her name is Ada S. Ada grew up in Shanghai and then she moved to the States when she got married. It's a really good powder, y'all. This Fenty 
Fenty Pro Filter in Butter. I've been using this brush. I found it on Taobao, by the way. It's not super cheap, but it's not super expensive. It's so soft and it's handcrafted. Very nice haul. Looks like a Harry Potter wand. Okay, I really do find that I am getting better at Chinese even if I'm not talking because I'm thinking in Chinese and I'm sort of repeating what they say. So I have found out what eyeshadow is. It's called Yan Ying. The way that they sentence their structure is different from English and because I am so used to like thinking and speaking in English, when I speak in Chinese, I'm always translating and that's not always the best way to speak. In school, you don't learn about what makeup is in Chinese. I don't learn about what like science or math is in Chinese. I, I don't know. You just sort of know like feelings and people and weather. I've also been watching Tiff with me. Oh my god, they're so great. I don't know if they're watching. Sometimes they watch and sometimes they comment, but like, hi if you're seeing this. They're so lovely. I've met them like a bunch of times. Um, IRL. They are great. They're super nice. Their videos are so funny. The editing is also spot on. I know they hate editing. It just takes a really long time. Plus, they have to do subtitles. This like ongoing saga with Michelle and um, Fei Yong. I think that's what they they say it's so funny i'm so invested uh, michelle i hope you end up with faith i shouldn't say that you go with what your heart chooses i don't want to ship people unless they're like comfortable being shipped are you comfortable being shipped michelle i think so you've made a couple of videos about it i ship y'all let me bronze up my face with a little bit of hula it's like the perfect shade for me now because i did grow a little bit fairer Sunblock guys, sunblock. I've been holding an umbrella. I pack an umbrella in my bag. I think it's the true transition to being an auntie. I have been called auntie like several times. By like very young kids are like five. And I was like, auntie, what are you talking about? Yeah, but I've been using an umbrella because I've been learning how to do my hair. It will make sense if I were to say that the heat has damaged my hair, right? I don't know if it's the fact that I've been using an umbrella but my hair has really improved. When I first got it sort of coloured, this sort of rose gold, it used to be pink, lah, now it's faded into a rose gold. Thank God, I actually prefer this colour way more. I thought I had to cut off all of the ends, it was like super split endy, but I stuck with it, I put like a hair mask on, and I started bringing an umbrella around, and I think the heat that goes into your hair is not good, and you know your scalp needs like UV protection as well. And I also bought this powder sunscreen. It's in my bag, so I'm not gonna show it to you but I got it for like 45 bucks from Sephora. This is the Invisible Setting Powder. I got it in Translucent. Um, there's also one in Light, Medium and Dark and I want to tell you all first, I went to Sephora to check out the Medium. The Medium is actually darker than my skin tone and I'm usually like the standard Medium so just go with Translucent. That's what I go with. It's a universal shade. Very very important to touch up your sunscreen. I was having like a consultation with like my aesthetic doctor and I was like mm, I'm the best at sun care. I'm like so Good. I put it every day even when I don't go out and I was like really hardcore bragging lah about my <laughs> sun care and then he was like do you reapply every two hours and I was like how to is it I got makeup on my face I can't just like smear it and then he was like okay so you're not the best so I started researching on how I can best reapply my sunscreen even if I don't wear foundation which is most of the days because I just like to breathe unless I'm on camera the idea of having that layer and then sunscreen and then layer oil and then sunscreen freaks me out now it's really great because now it's just a setting powder I'm able to absorb shine and also protect my skin it's like a retractable brush but with sunscreen built in it's perfect that is what I've been loving. Oh, speaking of loving, this is from Huga. It's a handmade like ceramic mug and it's on sale. I don't know why it's been permanently on sale for like forever. I got one in blue and one in like a cream colour. This was only $2. Oh my god, fantastic. There's one Huga at Santec. That's the one that I always go to. There's another one at Next and then there's another one in the West. What a great size. What a great cup. Okay, I have this blush called Natural Glow. It's the butter blush from Physician's Formula. You can get Physician's Formula now. The most gentle sort of blush. This is the Laura Geller Daydreamer Illuminating Drops. So maybe when I'm, you know, confident enough, because I obviously don't want to do a bad job just for like comedic effect, right? I want to be able to do a good job and actually be able to speak in Mandarin. I feel like I get more feminine <laughs> when I speak 
in Chinese, Mandarin. Since I am on, you know, this uh, exciting journey on creating better content, more frequent content and content that I want to make, I also want to hear what y'all want me to make. What have you really enjoyed? What do you subscribe for? What do you want to see more of? Um, I really want to be able to sit down and talk to you guys more because I know that's what y'all like and that's what I also really enjoy. Check out that glow! Wow! At first when I put it on, I was like, ooh, too metallic. But this is dope. This is awesome. Okay. I think I'm gonna go with this. I'm gonna go with the go-go tint. I'm gonna put in the center and then smudge it out. I don't wanna have to worry about my lips. Great choice. Wow. Nice. Okay. Leave in the comments down below what kind of topics you want me to talk about for Get Ready With Me. What other videos you want to see. I am so excited and I'm so ready to make better videos. And it's just, it's, it's, it's been fun. Look, the sun's out! Oh, Ending on such a positive note. Should I spray my face? I should. I'm going to take the Cordelli. Guys, I'm so excited to leave my hair long and I'm so excited to dye it black. Like, just jet black. I feel like my hair peaked two years ago. You know, when I had, like, that really long, black, like, curly hair and I didn't have to do anything and it looked beautiful. You really don't appreciate the things while you have them until they're not there anymore. Um, true words have never been said. Had a bad relationship, but had good hair. Okay, I'm gonna spritz a little bit of heat protectant. This is from L'Oreal. It's just a... It's, I think this might be from Look Fantastic. It's like $12, $13. And their shipping's really fast and it's very chill, so I like it. I realise it's very important to let the heat protectant dry up in your hair before you get started. You don't want to be in a situation where you're sort of like sizzling your hair. I've been getting perms like consistently since... I want to say the start of uni, like 2015. I've never actually bleached my hair until last year. Like I did a balayage and then, you know, I put the colour in and stuff and they were like, oh, your hair's been bleached, you can't get any more perms. You know what, you can still curl your hair, you can straighten it or do whatever, you just can't get a permanent perm. So I was like, alright. If I take a little bit more time, especially because now my makeup is very, very simple. This makeup takes a while, but realistically my makeup usually takes like 15 to 20 minutes even less now that like my eyebrows are very neat and my eyelashes are in place like it literally takes like 10 minutes sometimes so i've got more time to do my hair which is fan and i just like started learning how to do it okay i'm gonna separate like this much amount of hair it took me like a couple of tries to get this right so if you don't get this right don't worry about it this is such a cheap and good hair straightener it's on shopee it's like 20 bucks or something like that i wasn't sure if i was gonna like it or not if i was gonna use it that's why i got a really cheap one but it works really great so anyway it's just turning it like this okay that's not that's not that fantastic so i just take it and I curl it, and then I pull it through. Ta-da! What? Right? Cool, you can twist it to make it go even curlier. I like this more than the curling wand, even though the curling wand is a lot faster and more straightforward, because this curl is super loose. It's super wavy, and it's not as, like, dank curl. When I want a dank curl, I will use the curling iron. I also got hair waver and stuff. It's so fun doing hair. Right now, when especially when I want it fast and I want it like easy breezy and more like effortless, I just do this. Twist first, hold the end, make sure that it's still in the iron plate and then just go through. Ta-da! Nice, right? I like to curl them sort of outwards. You can choose to alternate your curl. I have a lot of hair, so it takes a while. But if you don't, then good for you lor. Show off. <laughs> can we try with like a bigger section of hair? I have mine set to 180 degrees, by the way. In case that matters. I sound like every Tinder guy. The good thing about curling your hair like this, when it's, you know, like this, it's, it's super forgiving. You don't have to get it exactly the same amount of curl. You don't have to get it like exactly the same direction. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you screwed up, just go back again. It's really easy and nice. What? Okay, where did the curl go though? And it's important not to cap it like too hard because then you won't be able to go down. Just sort of go at it simply because this is the bottom layer it doesn't have to be super curly so while well, i'm gonna do my hair i don't really have to explain lah you know just very easy take a section throw it back throw it back throw it back work your way out i really want to talk about sustainability my start in sustainability 
was without me even sort of knowing. I just hate being wasteful. This year, I feel like it's the year that people are a little bit more conscious about how much waste they're generating. And I've given quite a lot of interviews on sustainability and it's been really nice. I've had a bunch of people ask me like, hey, when you talk about sustainability, doesn't it deter brands from working with you? Actually, no. First of all, more sustainable companies do approach me. And second of all, when brands are taking in feedback, they really appreciate like the consumer's thoughts, right? So I'll just tell them lah, like, hey, wasteful packaging, it's a no-no. Maybe we can try and be a little bit more sustainable. Maybe let's, you know, do this, do that. And they really appreciate it. And so when they have like sustainable sort of campaigns, they want to work with me, which is fantastic because I would be more than happy to work with them as well. I'm not here to preach, but I'm just letting you all know that seriously, sustainability is not as difficult or inconvenient as people think. It's just a matter of sort of changing your habits and just changing the way that you usually approach things. So for me, I have... I want to show y'all. Isn't this so cute? It's from Bamboo Straw Girl and it's just this like little batik thing and it holds... My bamboo straw and also my utensils. Look at the wow. Okay, so these are a little bit more fancy and you know I just I just like it. It's very cute. They're made out of I think either beech wood or bamboo. And this is made out of bamboo, so it can be washed like for a very long time. Alternatively, if you don't like this, if you think it's a little bit bulky, this is super cute, okay? It's a collapsible silicone so you can bite your straw. I'm a biter. And you can also collapse it and fold it. And this is only like three bucks on Shopee. This was free to me because my prof literally bought like a bunch of them and he's just given it out to all of his students. And then you also get a little thingy to sort of clean it through and pull it through. You can also get metal straws. Those are super cheap. Or even those like Japanese sort of little like container boxes um, of utensils. They have it on Shopee. It's super cheap and super convenient and super easy. You just rinse them with water. Once you're done, it's not a big deal. Even if you don't have water nearby, you can just sort of wait until you get home. And being sustainable is also very nice on your wallet. Like, honestly, you don't really think about it, but it is. And it just feels nice, you know, that you're being a little bit more mindful about the waste that you produce. You just don't want to be in a situation where you're just wasting and, and not being very connected with your items. I think that's where a lot of this, like, desensitization from having things and then it becomes an addiction you just have to have more and more you know you just end up feeling very unfulfilled with your purchases that's why right now i'm gonna do a like major declutter of the house because i've only lived here for a year i extended my lease by the way i'll be here for another year and i moved from a room to a house and it's still cluttered so I don't know. I just feel like I just want to make a little bit of a change and I want to declutter and not be able to have so many things. There is another way to do it. I learned from Kaylee Melissa. You just go one round and then you go through and then you clamp and then you pull. So if you're like confused about the twisting. Oh, that sucks. Okay, wait. Oh, I don't know if that's going to work. That didn't look that great. Okay, you see it? You see it? Just a little bit. It's very strange because like these things are so normal, I guess, in Canada, in the US, in uh, even Korea and Taiwan. But for some reason, it's just not that big in Singapore. And I think it's because we are just so used to having things so easy. You know, like our garbage disposal, the guy comes, even if you have trash like all around your area or whatever, they just clear it anyway. In Australia and oh, especially in Australia and I think a lot of other countries, if you don't properly dispose of your trash, they will not collect it. Your things will just stink up your whole place. You will just have like clogged garbage like disposal and your neighbours will judge you and you will just suffer the consequences of being not considerate. There's an element of like shame and embarrassment to it that I think helps people like, you know, get themselves together. It's not the same in Singapore, like we have it so good. We can put trash in recycling bins. But like the little island that we have our trash on is gonna be full by I want to say like 2030 and we don't have a set plan of how to dispose of our trash. Let's just try and do our best to not produce so much. Instead of like guilt tripping, I, I really feel like it should be a matter of like finding joy in, in reusing the things and being a little bit more precious with the things that you have. Harking back to like the idea of, of food and... Am I twisting it the right way? Let me try twisting it this way. 
oh, okay, okay. It's a little flat, but we'll, we'll go back in later and highlight some pieces. I guess this is like a really good full circle that we're coming with, you know, in terms of food and in terms of waste and the things that we're using. Giving it a second life, you know, swapping your clothes. This is thrifted, like I said. I found it at um, the Lucky Plaza level 6. It was only $10 and it's super cute. If you don't like the idea of getting things secondhand, you can also look at what is produced ethically, if they have good ethical practices, if the cloth is sourced sustainably, that sort of thing. If it's a natural fibre especially, you know, natural fibres are better in terms of like, they're way more long-lasting and they feel better on your body. So really look into these things. Look at what you're buying and look at whether it's good for you or not. Okay, getting the hang of it. That's good. We're reaching the front of the face. That's why I like starting from the back because when you, you know, start making mistakes at the back, no one really cares. Let me twist it back this way. Boom. Okay, okay, great. Usually I like like smaller pieces in the front because it creates a more like pronounced curl. But this works too. Now I'm gonna do this other side. Do you see what a difference this makes? Very minimally, I don't know if it's worth the time, but I am talking, which is why I take a little bit longer and I am learning how to do it. <laughs> Last piece, gotta do it well. I don't know why I'm struggling with it so much. Maybe it's been a while since I've done it. Oh, look at that girl. Okay, so I just have to say that I have been screwing up and then the Lord takes mercy on me, all right. I'm just gonna run my hands through it. As you can tell, it's very forgiving, even if you suck like I do. This bang is a little bit too curly. Okay, it's a little more chill. I'm still a hand newbie, so please forgive me, but this is the look. It's very chill, very like textured, especially if you have highlights in your hair or if your hair is like mine and it's sort of this like ombre effect, it really helps to sort of keep the hair a little bit more curly and bouncy so that the line doesn't look so intense. Remember to plug out your hair tools. Thank you so much for watching. I know we ended on a very short note on the sustainability, but I don't want to preach, you know, just do what you want, but just know that like what you do affects the world even if you can't immediately see it because we're all part of a community. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Let me know you liked it. I I will appreciate it, you know, and subscribe to the channel. If you want to see the videos hot off the press, also turn on the bell notifications. Click that bell beside the subscribe button. Like I said, let me know in the comments what you want to see more of. I will be taking notes. I will see you guys really soon.